And uh, what I have here is a uh, very nice plaque that's got about 50 whereases, and they all say, Lacey Putney's a really cool guy. <laughs> and, uh, it sort of recounts her very, very distinguished career that many have agreed to be a record of accomplishment that is unlikely to be uh, matched or beaten for uh, any time in the foreseeable future. But it, uh, I hope uh, in short order, Lacey, it encapsulates some of your uh, amazing accomplishments, uh, your remarkable public service to the people of Virginia, and is a small sign of the love and admiration that all the governors and all the people here tonight and all the legislators have uh, for you. And we wish you and Carmel the best as you go into retirement. Godspeed. Virginia, 
And my guess is that whichever one gets elected governor, they're going to come after him and want him for Secretary of Finance, but he'll stay where he is, I think. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Most of what you hear when we are in session is dull and dry. I now have an idea how Winston Churchill felt when he was receiving an honor that he didn't think he deserved. That's exactly the way I feel tonight. He said, I am deeply gratified. I am awestruck that you have chosen to honor me in this fashion because I do not think I deserve it. However, if you have no misgivings, neither will I. <laughs> when I look into the audience and see all of you people with government experience and the governors and what have you, I'm sure that every one of you knows as much and more about my subject than I do. It reminds me of the old gentleman in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, who miraculously survived the great Johnstown flood, and he became obsessed with talking to everyone he met and telling them about it. He just had to talk about it. When he got to heaven, he asked St. Peter to arrange a time for him to speak to everybody. He wanted to tell them about the great John, Johnstown flood. A few days later, St. Peter came around and told him that he had arranged, had arranged for all of the people there in heaven to be out on cloud nine the next day at six o'clock. But he said, I want to warn you, one of those in your audience is going to be Noah. <laughs> you know, when you're as befuddled as I am after all this good stuff, you hardly know what, which way to go. I know that Yogi Berra says when you get to the fork in the road, take it. So I guess that's what I've got to do. Much of what we do is dull, dry, and boring, but Occasionally, we have a lighter moment in the legislative process. I don't know how many of you know Ray Garland. Ray was at William F. Buckley in the house when he was there. I've never heard of vocabulary like it. Back in those days, we frequently had night sessions. We would adjourn till about 8 at night, come back after having dinner. And you'd be amazed how many of my colleagues took the opportunity to add a little liquid courage while they were on. One night, Ray Gollum was wound up. He was regaling them all the house. He went on and on. Members began to yawn. He used every 16-inch word in the dictionary. When he finished, Jim Thompson, who was the floor leader, stood up and said, Mr. Speaker, I wonder if the distinguished gentleman from Hillsville, Delegate Giesler, chairman of the Republican caucus, would take the floor and interpret for the rest of the people that what Greg Allen just said. <laughs> well, nobody, nobody expected Giesler to respond, but he stood up extinguished his cigarette. We all, most of us smoked in those days on the floor. And he said, Mr. Speaker, it is abundantly obvious that the gentleman from Rono is grossly inebriated by the exuberance of his own verbosity. <laughs> he immediately took his seat, and you can imagine what an explosion of laughter and applause we had in that. I wish, I wish some of y'all could be there. When I tell you when I'm talking like this how dry it is, and I want you to know that I'm not going to talk long, but give you an idea how dry it is when you try to talk to a group like this. Our 
legal fraternity in Lexington invited Dean Muse from T.C. Williams Law School to come to Lexington as a luncheon speaker for our legal fraternity. When Dean Muse arrived, first thing he said was, you folks should have checked a lot more than you did before you invited your luncheon speaker because I'm known as the driest person who ever walked. He said, let me illustrate. He said, I was walking across the campus, a small bridge over part of the lake at West Hampton, and he said, I saw a bunch of students at the other end of the bridge. When I got there, I asked what was going on. And one of the students said, Dean Muse, we dropped a camera down in the lake and you are the perfect person to go down and retrieve it. He said, why in the world would you think of asking me to retrieve it with all you young folk? And a young man said, Dean Muse, I am in your Monday, Wednesday, Friday lecture, and I know that you can go down deeper, stay down longer, and come up dry than anybody on the face of the earth. <laughs> I was going to take some time and do a little uh, recap of some of the things that have occurred during the 52 years that I had been privileged to serve, but it would take a lot more time than I want to, to dwell on it. Uh, during the years that I've been fortunate to be down here, we saw the rise and the fall or the end of the so-called bird conservative uh, call it the organization it was not limited the membership and participation was not limited to legislators probably one thing that extended its longevity and its quality was the fact that local constitutional officers were intensely supportive of the organization. They frequently ran as a team. The um, reason that they were so loyal to the Bird machine was one of some of the Bird Senior's best political allies, closest friends, was the chairman of the State Compensation Board that fixed the salaries as the part of all of the Constitution officers. <laughs> uh, the, um, I, I looked, I tried my best to find the beginning and the ending of the burden machine, but it's not easy to pinpoint either one. I am sure that a lot of people who liked it thought it was there for a long while, and those who challenged, who dared to challenge it, thought it stayed forever. But I think the beginning of the demise of that organization came around 1964 during the presidential election, when Johnson was running for re-election and Barry, Barry Goldwater was the candidate for the Republican. Senator Byrd Sr. had not supported a Democrat candidate for president since FDR in 1936. And now everyone is wondering what's going to happen this year in 1964. Well, Senator Byrd said nothing and kept his golden silence. The chairman of the state Democrat Party Congressman Watkins Abbott did not endorse the man, nor did former Governor Bill Tuck endorse him. Not many of the big boys did. What happened was, toward the end of the campaign, Governor Harrison endorsed the president in the last few days of the month of September. And the next thing that happened, the governor and lieutenant governor, Mills Godwin, 
boarded the Lady Bird special train and went across Virginia with the First Lady and stopped in six places. One of them was Norfolk, where there were 20,000 enthusiastic people there to greet the Lady Bird train and all who were there. The, uh, there are many examples in the political world that the informed social uh, political writers will tell you was the beginning or the, the end or the peak of that bird machine. As you know, when Senator Byrd resigned from the United States Senate, Governor Harrison appointed his son, Harry Jr., as Senator to take his place. And Harry, Harry Jr., you know, a few weeks ago died. And while we were at the funeral, uh, maybe three weeks ago, believe it or not, some of the old friends began to reminisce, talking about the bird machine. Anyway, I, uh, I don't know whether dig in here and throw this stuff away, but I'm not going to cover it all. Uh, uh, just a minute, bear with me. Let, maybe I can re remember some of it. The name Henry Howell might come to mind of some of you. Henry was certainly the emerging leader of the liberal wing of the Democrat Party. And he ran on one occasion. He won in a three-way race. But when he ran, he ran against John Dalton. And the, all of the newspaper writers in our area were predicting another victory for Howell, but that's not the way it turned out. Dalton won by more than 158,000 votes, and as you know, he, all, he did a great job as governor of Virginia. I'm going to stop boring you to death and not going to go through all this crazy political stuff here. But tempted to tell you that I do not know how to respond to all of the good things that I've heard here tonight. And I, words are not adequate to express to Charlie, to Mike, and all of them at the Jefferson Institute my deep appreciation for taking the project of recognizing my 52 years by creating a fellowship in my honor. I, I cannot believe that it's happening. I am grateful, cannot express to you adequately how grateful I am. And every one of you governors, I thank you for your words. I can't believe you've taken the time to come here for this occasion, but I deeply appreciate it. And I'm going to leave, I'm going to stop right now, except to say, we are going to be witnessing change in the political landscape everywhere from now on, just like we did in the past. But I am convinced that the people of Virginia will continue to elect public officials, public servants, who put principle ahead of party. And I think that's going to happen in Virginia, will continue to be one of the best states in which to locate a business or grow a business and I think much of that is attributable to these gentlemen here who serve with distinction as governor of the greatest state in the country. Thank you very much.
thank you so much, Lacey. I'm going to have one of the ladies stand, and that's Carmella. Let me quickly wrap up. I want to do thank three other people who really worked hard on this event, did a lot of the coordination. That is Carly Nelson, uh, Katie Gaskins, and Kate Savage. So it's my pleasure. Secretary for 54 years is responsible for anything that I have accomplished. Better little Lane stand up. <laughs>